In this video, I'm going to introduce gauge transformations and the concept of gauge invariance. This video is part of a playlist on electromagnetism. So make sure you watch the previous video where I actually derived these expressions. So these are expressions for the electric and magnetic fields in terms of the scalar and vector potentials. So phi is the scalar potential, which you can see over here, and A is the vector potential. And B is the magnetic field, and E is the electric field. So the point of this video is to show that the scalar and vector potentials are not unique. So you can actually choose different versions of A and phi, and you can still get the same electric and magnetic fields. So the electric and magnetic fields are the things that you actually measure in an experiment. But phi and A are useful abstractions that help you work out the electric and magnetic fields. So this is what gauge transformations are about. You can actually transform into a different set of A and phi, and you will get the same electric and magnetic fields. So the prime notation over here is telling us that we've transformed into a different version of A. So this A is the original A, and A prime is a new version of A. It's the same for phi as well. Phi gets transformed to phi prime. So the magnetic field can be written in terms of the curl of A, and it can also be written as the curl of this other A, this A prime. And the electric field can be written as this combination of phi and A, and it can also be written as this combination of phi prime and A prime. So let's find out what the transformation has to be to make sure that we uh, preserve the electric and magnetic fields. Because we don't want to be getting a different electric and magnetic field, because that would not be the identical physical situation. So what do we have to do to A to make sure that it still gives us the same magnetic field? Well, what we can do is, I'll write this over here, we can set A prime, so this vector potential A prime, we can set that equal to the original A, so that's this A over here, and we can add to that original A the gradient of some scalar field. I'm going to call that lambda. So lambda is some scalar field. It's kind of like phi, but it, it, we actually have freedom to choose what this lambda is. And if we can find a lambda such that this relationship holds, then these guys are gauge transformations of each other. But we're, we're leaving out a very crucial ingredient. We're leaving out phi. Phi also has to transform. And we'll get to phi in just a moment. But first, I want to show you that this works. So let's go ahead and substitute this in here and verify that the curl of both of these guys gives the same magnetic field. So I'll do that over here. So what do we want to show? We want to show that the curl of A prime is the same as the curl of A. And the curl of A, we know by definition, is B. So that is going to show us that all three are equivalent. So let's take the curl of A prime. That's going to be equal to, so this prime over here denotes that it's the transformed version. It's going to be equal to the curl of this definition that we've just put over here. So it's the original A plus the gradient of some scalar. So we have A plus the gradient of some scalar field. And now we can distribute this curl onto each of these guys, and that's going to give us two terms. It's going to give us the curl of A, and we're going to add to that the curl of the gradient. So we have the curl of the gradient of this scalar field lambda. And look over here, we have a vector identity that tells us that this is zero. And in the previous video, we discussed this. There is a video in the electromagnetism playlist that actually uh, shows that this is equal to zero. We prove some very useful vector identities. So make sure you watch that video, and then you'll see why this is equal to zero. So the reason this equals zero is because in the derivation, we have to assume that the order of partial derivatives can be swapped. So we can swap the order of those partial derivatives. And that allows us to conclude that the curl of the gradient of the scalar field is equal to 0. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say this over here is equal to 0. And what do we have left? We just have the curl of A. And that's equal to the magnetic field. That is, by definition, the magnetic field. So we have shown that the magnetic field can be represented as the curl of A 
and the curl of A prime. Taking the curl of both of these guys gives the same magnetic field. So it doesn't matter which of these A's we choose, as long as we can find a scalar potential lambda, we are guaranteed to get the same physical result. So the same physical measurements of the magnetic field are guaranteed regardless of which A we use. Now we have to sort out phi. So we have sorted out uh, this A over here, but we have to sort out phi. So how does phi have to transform in order to maintain this electric field? Because we can't have a different electric field. We need both of these guys to be the same. So I'll write down the answer. Uh, you can pause the video over here if you want to think about what you'd have to do to phi. I'm going to write it down over here. So phi prime has to be equal to the original phi, but we have to subtract off the partial time derivative of lambda. And this will guarantee that we get the same electric field. So I'll show you this when we substitute it into this expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression over here, and I'm going to substitute the transformed version of phi and the transformed version of a. So that's phi prime and a prime. Let's do that over here. So this is going to give us, I'll write this down over here. So we have minus the gradient of phi prime minus the partial time derivative of a. And this is going to be equal to, let's substitute all of these transformed versions. So over here, we're going to have minus the gradient of all of this stuff over here. This is by definition phi prime. So phi minus the partial time derivative of lambda. And what are we going to have over here for the uh, a, a prime? is going to be minus the partial time derivative of so A has to get transformed by adding this gradient of lambda. So what we're going to have is A over here. And we're going to add to that the gradient of lambda. So this is just substituting in these transformed versions of phi and A. Now let's unpack all of these brackets and show that this is actually equivalent to this expression over here, and therefore equivalent to the electric field. So we'll do that underneath. So what do we have? This is equal to, over here, from this term, we have minus the gradient of phi. So we can distribute that gradient onto these terms. So this term is going to give us minus the gradient of phi. Then, if I gloss over this term, and I get to this term over here, if we distribute this partial time derivative onto a, that's going to give us the partial time derivative of a. So I'm going to put that over here. So we're going to get minus the partial time derivative of A. And this is the electric field, right? This is defined to be the electric field. But this is not all the terms. There are still two more terms. And we're going to find that these terms are actually equivalent to each other. So let's take this term over here. So this second term in the first bracket. If we apply this gradient operator onto this time derivative, we can actually get another term out of that. And here we have a minus and a minus, and that's going to give us a plus. So what we're going to have is plus the gradient of the partial time derivative of lambda. And lambda is this scalar field that we're using to modify both phi and a. So that came from this term over here. Now let's have a look at this term over here. Here we have a time derivative acting on this gradient operator. Now, the gradient consists of a bunch of partial derivatives with respect to position coordinates, so uh, with, with respect to x, y, and z. And we're actually allowed to commute those derivatives. So time derivatives and position derivatives commute. So this is a very useful property. So what we can do is we can take this time derivative and commute it with the gradient operator. And we can bring the time derivative inside, and then we can directly act with the time derivative operator on lambda. So that's going to give us the following expression. So we're still going to have a minus sign. We're going to have minus, and we can take the gradient outside, the gradient of the partial time derivative of lambda. And have a look at this. This term is the same as this term. So these guys are both going to cancel. They're going to equal 0. So then we're just going to be left with these two terms over here. So this, these two terms are defined to be the electric field. So this is 
equal to the electric field. So what have we shown over here? We've shown that if we choose some scalar field lambda and we use lambda to modify a and phi, it will guarantee that we get the same electric and magnetic fields. So this is guaranteed by these transformations. So if you have uh, a pair of phi and a and phi prime and a prime, they are guaranteed to be gauge transformations of each other if you can find a scalar field lambda. So if you can find such a lambda where you have this kind of relationship, these guys are gauge transformations of each other. And the fact that you still have the same physical electric and magnetic fields if you do a gauge transformation, that is actually called gauge invariance. So it doesn't matter which gauge you use, you have freedom to choose which gauge you use. And what we're going to find in the next few videos is that we can set, we can impose conditions on A and phi. And if we impose those conditions, that's actually going to simplify equations. And it's going to make the equations easier to solve. In the next few videos, we're going to be discussing the Lorentz gauge and the Coulomb gauge. These are specified conditions that allow us to simplify the equations that we have to solve. You can find those videos in the electromagnetism playlist.